Jerry collapsed with her pulmonary embolism and cardiac arrest on January 7th, 2018. She spent six weeks in Norfolk. And then after that, she went to the Kessler Institute for Rehabilitation in East Orange, New Jersey. She spent six weeks there. So she, and then she, we brought her down here to peak because she was gonna need a little, we were gonna need more time and she just needed another step. But she ended up staying there for four months. So she left our house basically dead on January 7th and she came home on July 31st. She had a DVT, which is blood clot in your leg, went into her lungs, pulmonary embolism. And the, the, the medical term for that was massive pulmonary embolism. I was in pain in my chest and it, I had, I can breathe, I can breathe. I, I called to Chris, was in the bedroom. It was home with me. When I fell down on the, in between, dropped my coffee and fell down between the coffee table and the couch. Then she said she needed a pot. She's going to throw up. Yeah. Got her a pot. I said, you're going to throw up? She said, no, help me. Call 911. And they asked me a couple of questions, said, get her on the floor, told me how to do chest compressions. But I was doing them. And at a certain point, she, I, she coded. I know it. She just did. She disappeared. And I was like, no, 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 no. We're not done yet. No. And... I called 911 back and I said, she's gone, something happened. And right then EMS came in. But at some point, one of the ladies uh, looked up and asked me if I needed to call somebody. I hadn't even thought about that. And I called Rick. He said, okay, hang tight. I'll get there as quick as I can. And he showed up right when they were getting ready to take her out. Uh, when they left, he said, you know, get a couple things together and I'll take you up to the hospital. You'll probably spend the night. I didn't, at that point, I didn't know I was going to be up there for six weeks. That whole first couple of weeks especially, um, he just made his presence so clear. One of the kids said, Dad, how, I don't know how you're doing this. And I said, it's God. It's not me. I said, if it wasn't for God, I'd be in a puddle on the floor. Jesus saved me. Jesus saved me. He did. I know that. I felt him in the hospital, felt him in my home. He was there. I can look back and see that now, and but it, the whole time. So the church is helping financially. Yeah. One of the first days we were in there, um, yeah. people started bringing me money. We needed to get work done on the house. A crew from, and some of them are from our do crew now, um, tore down our old deck. They came and cleaned up our yard while we were out of town, Aww. didn't charge us. And the bathroom, we completely redid the bathroom. Jerry said, oh, we can do the tile. And I'm thinking, no, we can't. I talked to um, someone at the church. Um, I said, come out and let me know what it would run. So they came out, he and his wife. And she they called me it. a couple days later. And I said, so what, what would it run? And she said, we got it. Tom Lee did the drywall. Fred Robinson did the electrical work. The church set up a fundraiser at um, Sackham High. They did. I that, remember that now. Yeah. And people started bringing us meals three three Those nights girls. a week. I've told the ladies a couple of times, you don't have to keep doing this. Mm -hmm. And as we're five years down the road, this is still happening, you know? And uh, and they know they Money don't have to keep doing it, fighting. but they want to. It's, yeah. It, any way you can think of, um, they've helped. And And I think other people on the outside have seen this too. And I've told so many people about the church and the help we got. This church has been an unbelievable source of mm -hmm. help for us. Yeah. Um, support, yeah. every, every different kind of support you can imagine.